Hello, my name's Mark Warren. I'm talking on behalf of myself and uh, Abby McDonald, and we're both based at uh, Deakin University in, in Melbourne. Our talk's going to be about um, rafter benthic uh, microfossils and their paleobiogeography, and what that can tell us about ocean current um, history uh, within the Paleobass Strait Seaway. So, um, uh, rafted uh, benthic microfossils uh, started off as epiphytal organisms. Uh, so there can be things such as um, um, uh, foraminifera or ostracoda. This talk we're going to be uh, focusing in on the ostracoda, but there can be other organisms as well. And they're, they're fauna that's attached to seaweed. So um, what uh, commonly happens in terms of uh, uh, seaweed uh, dispersal events is that seaweed often gets ripped up from coastal regions and, and, and continental shelf regions by storms and is then sent drifting uh, on surface ocean currents, sometimes vast distances across ocean basins. And so any epiphytal fauna that's living on that seaweed uh, can be dispersed via that mechanism as well. And uh, when they arrive in new geographic regions, if the environment's suitable, they can colonise those new uh, marine uh, geographic regions. So by studying the biogeography of these things and their stratigraphic occurrences through time, um, we can start to unravel um, the history of ocean currents within a region and the particular region as I said we're looking at here is the Bass Strait Seaway and some of the currents that I'll be talking about are the East Australian Current, um, the Lewin Current and its extension the Zeeing Current, the Bass Cascade and the Antarctic Circumpolar Current. So some of the uh, most important um, occurrences of these um, epiphytal uh, microfossils are their first appearance datums because they're telling us something about the first time these taxa migrated into this re into into uh, a region, and often when we're looking at the fossil record of these epiphytal taxa, they appear very suddenly. There doesn't seem to be any evolutionary forerunners to them within the stratigraphic record. They're just completely new things that pop up in the stratigraphic record. And so when we're looking at their first appearance datums, and then we think about the global biogeography, we can start to make inferences about the ocean currents that they might have been associated with or that, that influenced their passive migration into this region and hence the history of those ocean currents. But first appearance datums are not the only thing that we can look at. We can also look at disappearances and extinctions of these things as well um, and they can be significant in terms of deciphering ocean current history as we'll see in a moment. So the first example I want to talk about is a group of um, ostracods. So ostracods are uh, microscopic crustaceans with a calcium carbonate shell. They're very, very abundant and common, common in marine sequences, uh, um, pretty much throughout the Phanerozoic, but particularly in the Cenozoic. And um, in this particular group of taxa arose during the Miocene, near Hornibrookella species, and they first evolved in the Western Pacific, in the equatorial Western Pacific. And then they've become dispersed in ocean currents, uh, particularly the uh, equatorial currents. Uh, so they have a, uh, now have an almost uh, uh, um, uh, transglobal or transoceanic uh, um, equatorial distribution, where they've been able to get through ocean gateways when they've been open, such as the Isthmus of Panama. But they've also been dispersed um, via uh, uh, gyre currents, particularly in the North Pacific and the South Pacific. Um, so in, these, in this upper diagram here, we can see the solid symbols are modern occurrences and the open symbols are fossil occurrences. And in the lower diagram here, we can see the fossil occurrences first coming into southeastern Australia uh, during the latest early Miocene. And we infer that these have been associated with the East Australian current. So they're entering into the stratigraphic record about the same time as um, the well-known occurrences of warm water benthic foraminifera such as Lepidocyclina. So now more evidence that they're associated with the East Australian current is if we've looked at their distribution across Bass Strait. These are very common once they get into the area in the latest early Miocene but from then up into the mid Pliocene. They're very common in the Gippsland Basin but they're very patchy in the western Otway Basin in the west of Bass Strait. So this tends to suggest, even this tends to suggest that it, they're again associated with the East Australian current. Now in terms of the sampling of these areas, it's pretty much equivalent in terms of number of samples and fasces and that sort of thing. So this is a real 
uh, geography uh, uh, in terms of biogeography in terms of the distribution of this species in Bass Strait. So the inference that we're placing on this is that um, they're reflecting warm plumes of East Australian current waters uh, which first entered Bass Strait about 16.4 million years. There's also another strong plume in the very latest Miocene, about 5.8 million. And uh, they entered from the east, but they spread right across uh, southeastern Australian marine realms um, during these two, two periods. And interestingly, associated with the, these plumes of warm East Australian waters and these um, particular uh, ostracot taxa, in the terrestrial record at the same time, we get a, a peak in abundance of uh, wet climate nothophagus species. So it looks like you've got warm ocean currents readily evaporating, uh, promoting um, increased rainfall uh, across coastal regions and in the highlands, and so we're getting this um, wet forest flora at this period of time associated um, uh, with the warm ocean currents. Um, the second example I want to look at is uh, the occurrence of a species group within the ostracod genus Tasmanocypris. And here we can see that these uh, particular uh, species group first evolved in the Eocene in Antarctica when, it, when Antarctica was relatively warm climatically and there's warm waters uh, around Antarctica um, or warmish waters around Antarctica. So this is prior to the development of the Antarctic circumpolar current. But when the Antarctic circumpolar current did evolve with the, uh, around during the Oligocene, the waters around Antarctica became very frigid and they were no longer suitable for these Tasmanocypris species. So they shifted their biogeography. And they shifted their biogeography slightly northwards so that they broadly occurred within shallow marine regions within some in areas which we know as sub-Antarctic waters, which are waters of the east uh, uh, waters of the Antarctic circumpolar current, which are north of the sub-Antarctic front. So they're more temperate waters are associated with the Antarctic circumpolar current rather than the very frigid waters closer to Antarctica. And so when they became associated with these, these, uh, these uh, waters north of the sub-Antarctic front, their dispersal, um, uh, uh, was there was a dispersal that was enabled on these. And these first uh, taxa appeared in the Bass Strait region between, five, uh, between 9 and 5 million years ago. And so the inference is that the, this is the influence of the Antarctic circumpolar current, the West Wind Drift, impacting on the western Bass Strait region at this time. They also dispersed in the South Atlantic via dry currents. But, you know, around about this time in Bass Strait, we sort of probably had a confluence of the East Australian uh, current waters and the Antarctic circumpolar waters uh, because we get a co-occurrence of Neil Horny Brookella and Tasmanocypris species. When we move up into the uh, early Pliocene, um, during the latest Miocene, just prior to the early Pliocene, Bass Strait had, had became a dry uh, land because of sea level fall. Then during the early Pliocene, sea level rise, uh, marine organisms reinvaded this area as the uh, sea flooded across it. And during this period, during the early Pliocene, we see a very distinct partition, east-west partition across Bass Strait, uh, where the epiphytal benthic fauna is different in the east to the west. And we infer this as a uh, a new confluence between the East Australian current waters from the east and the newly formed Lewin current coming in from the west, and which has its origins in, 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 in um, uh, off Western Australia, northern Western Australia, and is relating related to the um, uh, um, developments and constriction of the Indonesian uh, flu throw. So um, by the time we get to the Quaternary, we have another climate shift. We have a very much a northward uh, shift of the westerly wind belt, which created a, uh, a very cold winter current during high sea level periods known as the Bass Cascade. And probably a lot of the warm water taxa that had previously been in Bass Strait could no longer survive because the winter, the winter uh, waters were just simply too cold at this point in time. And so that was uh, an event that led to the extinction of a lot of uh, warm water uh, um, uh, taxa within Bass Strait with the advent of uh, the Bass Cascade at the start of the Quaternary. And again, as I said, that relates to a northward shift of the westerly wind belt at that period of time. So from our study of um, ostracods, we've been able to differentiate quite a number of different events through time, uh, which are summarised in this diagram. I haven't talked in detail about all of them. 
but if you're interested in following up, there's some further references that you can access. Okay, thank you very much.